Let's take a look at the JSP standard tag library, or what's often referred to as JSTL. What is it? It's a set of custom tags that are now part of the JSP specification. So as developers, we can rely on these tags being available in any modern JSP implementation. An implementation of these tags is mandatory to be qualified as a JSP 2.0 implementation. The use of JSTL can significantly simplify the development of our JSP, making it easier to read, making it easier to maintain, uh, stretching out or extending the skill set of our JSP developers. There are five categories of tags that are available. There are the core tags. These are generally referred to, the URI is what's important here, and traditionally the prefix for the core tags is uh, C. So you see here a reference to the availability of the tag library description at uh, java.sun.com. We use the taglib directive, the JSP taglib directive, to define, in fact, that we're using a tag library. There's another set of tags specifically uh, optimized for use in providing inter internationalization as well as some basic formatting. An example of the use of this taglib directive we see here with the URL, uh, the URI pointing to JSTL slash FMT and by tradition and convention. And if you're uh, researching the syntax, um, you quite often see this referred to with the prefix FMT. Although that's not a requirement, it is uh, quite common to distinguish uh, these tags. Another tag library that's uh, quite commonly used is the JDBC tag library. We see here an example of the tag lib directive pointing to the URI for JSTL slash SQL. And traditionally, again, uh, you see the prefix attribute set to SQL. There are some XML processing tags if in your JSP you're doing an awful lot of XML processing. We see here what the URI is currently for the XML tag library. Um, traditionally, again, prefixed with the X um, prefix. And function tags. Function tags allow us to do exactly what it defines, which is a uh, call out to some standard JSP functions. We see here the URI uh, JSTL functions traditionally prefixed with FN. If your application server supports JSP 2.0, you should not have to actually physically have the tag library descriptors or the TLD file or the JAR file for JSTL. Um, you should not have to package those in your WAR file. They should be available uh, within a, an application server environment that is up to the JSP 2.0 specification. There are also extensions to these tag libraries providing us what's called a runtime version of the tags, giving us additional features such as the ability to supply dynamic values for some of the tag attributes. The URIs for the core for the uh, format or FMT tag library are slightly different. Uh, for the SQL library, notice um, the extension in the naming of the tag library descriptor with underscore RT, and also traditionally prefixed with underscore RT added to the normal prefixes. It's important to keep in mind that some application servers did not seem to support a separate runtime version. Instead, the base libraries allow expressions as tag attributes. For example, um, if you're using Tomcat, which we're not, we're using JBoss, which supports the runtime environment, but Tomcat 5.x would be an example of one of those servers. So what are some of these basic tags and how can we use them? From the core library, from the core JSTL tag library, we can display a Java bean or its property. It's quite common to see the use of the out tag from the core tag library and set the value attribute to be whatever it is um, that you want the value to be and written in line or written out 
in the output stream generated by your JSP. Note the use in the out tag of the expression language, in other words, the dollar sign reference to a product bean instance name and the value price. Another example of using the out tag and specifying the value attribute and also using an uh, optional attribute called default to specify a default value if there is no value for the price attribute in the product bean or if it is null. To define a new variable, there is a set tag in the core tag library to set a variable and the only reason you set up variables and initialize variables is because you want to use them over and over again. So in this example we create a local variable called p um, and, and set the value of that local variable to the object product bean. Now the name p can be used locally within the JSP can be used in place of product bean as the whole object instance name. Another example of using the set tag and specifying a target um, is being able to set property values on existing variables and here we're using the local p uh, variable that we set on the previous line. So what we're doing here is updating the price property of the product bean as referenced in the local variable that we created uh, using the set tag. One of the most elementary skills in building any uh, script or program is evaluating and executing code based on the results of a conditional test. If this is true, then do this. We have in the core JSTL an if tag that executes the body of the element if the condition that is declared using the test attribute if that condition returns in fact uh, true, a Boolean value. So what does this code look like? The opening tag, notice we're using the if tag and we're using the test attribute and we're evaluating if user bean dot pass order count is greater than 5 and we're in the body of the tag we're going to write out you are eligible for free shipping and using the close if tag we are actually creating a code block that will be evaluated if the test if the expression that's passed into the test attribute evaluates as true. Optionally you could save the result of the condition in a boolean value. So for example if our test is true then we want to create a variable, a local variable in this case called isFrequentShopper and store that within the body of our code. So again printing out you are eligible for free shipping after the close tag um, for our if we can create another test to see if the um, variable is frequent shopper exists. We have similar tags available to us for other logical constructs in JSP. So we can also model if then else extensive logic um, using the choose tag, using the when tag, using the otherwise tag. Choose tags are used to choose um, and execute code based on multiple possible variables. So we see the opening choose tag here and then we specify the test um, when user bean dot membership level equal goal. So we're uh, using that expression as our test value. Um, if that is in fact top down, if that is in fact um, what membership level equals then we will print out um, some text here. Close the when block another when block. In other words, another test. All of these when blocks with various tests grouped within a choose block. Optionally we can specify an otherwise block uh, using the otherwise tag. This is uh, whatever it is you want to execute regardless of um, the value that we're testing. So you have an otherwise block in your, or an otherwise tag in the core library 
that f is optional in an overall choose block. So what we have is the use blocked using JSP tags of a choose block, two when blocks, and an otherwise block to give us a little more sophisticated logic in um, our tags. We also have iterator tags for looping through lists and collections and maps. Um, the for each tag can iterate over an array, a collection, a map, an enumeration, an iterator, etc., 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 and then execute um, for each element, execute the body of the for each tag. So we here we see um, the opening for each tag. Notice this is from the runtime library, or I assume from the traditional prefix use for each. We're creating a, a local variable called user, and the list that we're iterating is specified in the items attribute here. The block of our for each element is um, print out a name label, print out the value of the first name field and the user object, and notice the use of the local user object as it's reading through the object or the list or the collection user list, and the close of our for each tag. Using for each, you can iterate over a subset of the elements. So here we have an example of using the same for each tag, using the same items, using the same user list, um, and optionally, we can specify the begin attribute and the end attribute. So it's only our list is only going to iterate beginning at 100, ending at 150 in our list, and print out the same uh, list. And then we see the closing of the for each tag, or the close for each tag to construct our entire uh, loop block. We can get additional information about each iteration as a loop tag status, as a loop tag status object that gets saved using the name that's provided in the var status attribute. So in defining the opening um, element for each, in addition to using var, in addition to using items, we can specify the items attribute, or the var status attribute to be a particular local variable. In the block of our loop, we see that we're interrogating information about the loop status itself using the status variable. So we can ask for, for example, count in this case inside of the loop, and simply closing the block, the for each block. So the, what we've seen here is just the addition of using the var status attribute to create a local variable that gives us some information about the iteration as a loop tag status object. What are some of the tags that are available to us to provide internationalization, or uh, what is commonly abbreviated as I18N? These are common requirements in any website or web application that is going to provide rendering of content in various spoken or read languages. It gives us the ability to dynamically set the preferred locale of a user. Different users can have different locale choice, or it may be that we are setting a system-wide setting. Users can change the locale um, by changing settings in their client or their browser. And a locale object in Java identifies any combination of language and the standard country code, as well as any cultural variants within the country um, or with countries that have derivations of the same language. For example, there's England English, and then there's United States English, and these are identified with uh, various variants of the name of the language. So we need the ability to provide translated text and externalize that translated text in simple text resource bundle files. Then the JSPs should use these bundle files and not write literal strings into your JSP code. The system should get the text from a, what's called a message bundle file um, that can be discovered and is appropriate for the user's preferred locale. In addition to needing the ability to render 
spoken language or printed language, we may need to be able to um, accommodate the differences in how numbers are formatted, how dates are read, how currency is formatted, um, if that's the output we need to render in our application. It's quite common to have to deal with these issues with internationalization. How can your application set the preferred locale of the user, overriding user settings or um, system settings? The locale can be set from the controller, usually a servlet in a model view controller architecture, or it can also be set from the JSP. It's usually better to have the controller set the locale um, because the controller is uh, fetching the locale once and then dispatching that information along the request response chain, uh, regardless of what um, view layer or view artifact is involved. Um, for example, it can fetch the preferred locale from a user profile database if you're storing it in LDAP, for example. Locale can be set at any scope, at the page scope, the request scope, or the session scope. Saving the locale in the session puts the responsibility of managing preferred locale on a small number of servlets. For example, the login servlet can save the locale in the session. You can also provide a language switcher servlet if it's necessary for a system um, where you're only supporting certain languages or you want to expand support for languages. And that servlet would update the locale within the session using standard uh, setters. A locale can also be set at the application level. This can come in handy when the application supports only one locale, but it's not the same as the JVM's default locale. By default, a JVM uses the operating system's locale. To set the preferred locale from a servlet, use the core config class. For example, in the config called the set, uh, the set method and pass the uh, session object and pass the locale and what locale you're passing is what you discover by using the get parameter method on the request object. So this is all one line of code. Or we can literally set, call on the config object, set a locale object or a locale constant and set it to the literal locale that we want. In this case, um, French in France. FR, I believe, is the two-letter derivation for French in France as opposed to French in Canada. To set the locale from a specific JSP, use the set locale tag. This is available in the format or FMT tag library. For example, in our tags, we would see a call to or the execution of the set locale tag, and we specify in the value attribute that we're setting the value of locale. In this case, we're using the expression language and we're grabbing from the param uh, instance the locale attribute. To set an application-wide locale, um, this is sort of outside the context of our JSP, note that we would set a very specifically named context parameter in WebXML. We would create a context parameter just as we have with other context parameters. It is application-wide. It's not limited to one servlet or one JSP. And the name of that context parameter is javax.servlet.jsp.jstl.fmt.locale. Yes, it helps to be able to copy and paste. And the value of that context parameter would be the value of the application-wide locale. And it's set in WebXML. To specify a resource bundle, the base name for a bundle file can be specified at the web module level by the controller or by each JSP. In most cases, an application has only one file per locale. In that case, you would want to specify the base name of the resource bundle at the web module level. To set the name at the web module level, again, you're going to use a context parameter in the web XML. Specifically, the name of the context parameter is javax.servlet.jsp.jstl.fmt.locale. 
context. Yes, you get copy and paste. And the value of that parameter in WebXML is, in fact, uh, the name of the locale that you're setting at the, or the name of the resource bundle that you're setting at the uh, web module level. To set it from a controller, use the config class. So again, we're calling the set method, and we're setting localization context. And the string variable that we're passing in is the name of the resource bundle, the base name of the resource bundle that we want to set within a controller. To set it from a JSP, there is a tag uh, called bundle. There's a bundle tag in the FMT tag library. You would then enclose the entire textual content within the bundle tag. For example, again, we're trying to set the base bundle, base name for the, a bundle using the bundle tag, and we use the base name attribute and the base name of the resource bundle that we're trying to incorporate in our JSP. How is it that we display the translated text from these various resource bundles once we specified the base name? There is a very simple tag from the FMT tag library that can be used to extract text from a previously declared resource bundle. The system fetches the text from the resource bundle file identified by the base name and the preferred locale, for example, um, it would, in, in this case, we're using the message tag and we're looking in the resource bundle that we previous defined as my messages. We're looking for the value and specifying the key, in this case, login. Some messages may have argument parameters. For example, result underscore display equals the square root of zero is one. These become, uh, this reference here is a reference to placeholders within the resource bundle. So this is what the resource bundle would look like. We have a key value called result underscore display equals the square root of, and using the curly bracket, we've provided placeholders in the resource bundle file. When we supply arguments and use this uh, value from the resource bundle, we can use the param tag within the message tag. So uh, for example, again, when we're using the message tag and we're looking for a certain key, notice we didn't self-close this tag because embedded in the body or the element of this tag, uh, message, we're going to pass two parameters using the param tag and a value, and those will be substituted in the resource bundle for position 0 and position 1. So we actually are providing a body for this message tag and use the param tags to pass the values um, to the resource bundle at certain positions. If you're providing internationalization support based off of locales, you need to keep in mind that this affects how numbers are rendered as well. So numbers should be formatted according to any local convention that you're supporting. The main cultural specific aspects are decimal notation, the thousand number separator, um, as well as currency symbol position. To make this easier for you, use the format number tag in your JSP. So what this would look like is uh, format number, format number, and we're working with two numbers here. In the second one, we're actually using the type attribute to specify that this number, product at price, it should be formatted as currency. We can also specify the currency code. We can specify the currency symbol using the standard syntax for this masking or this formatting. Additionally, if we're providing internationalization, we want to be respectful of how dates are formatted. Conveniently, the JSP tag libraries gives us a format date tag. Pretty simple example of how to use the format date tag. We're going to instantiate a JSP use bean object, even though it really doesn't have anything to do with format date, but obviously we're creating a Java date object so we can see the results um, formatting our date in different uh, cultural situations with different locales set. So the use of uh, format date um, of type date 
the use of format date with the type set to date and the date style set to full gives us the full name of the month and the day. The default style shows us the short name with just the month only. Both would give us the full date style. So let's go explore some of these tags in Eclipse and see how they work. So let's see some of these new JSTL tags, our newly found JSTL tags. Let's see them in action. I have a uh, servlet file here, which I'm going to uh, rename. I've used it before in uh, just instantiating a bean. I'm going to extend it so that I can save my old version. Um, I'm going to extend the uh, functionality of this, and I want to give it a more meaningful name other than demonstrate or demo EL. I actually want to demo um, JSTL. So I'm going to use the tool to track everything in my workspace and rename this file effectively. I'm going to right click on the demo EL Java file and choose refactor and rename. And this, and I'm going to rename the Java code, which effectively changes how Java is discovered, how it's compiled, what its fully qualified name is. And because this is a servlet, it's also going to change the reference uh, to this servlet in the web.xml. So let's watch what happens. If I give it a new name, let's say demo JSTL, and I click Next, because I've made the selection to update all references, it forces me to preview the changes that will be made. So it's going to update the uh, original demo source with the refactored source, and the window is showing me the changes that would be made. It's going to rename the compilation unit, in other words, the name of the file, from demo EL to demo JSTL. And it's also going to update the servlet class mapping in the web XML. All one fell swoop, um, click Finish, and it should be done. The file is renamed. The class definition is renamed within the Java file. And if I were to open the deployment descriptor just to double check uh, that, yes, the change was made, there it is. OK. So let's add some functionality to work with um, in our JSP, we're going to work with more complex objects where we worked with simple beans and properties in the expression language. Let's create a more complex object so we can look at, using the uh, JSTL, look at looping through, say, lists. So instead of actually um, just creating one instance, of a, an employee bean object. I'd like to create a few of them. So very simple Java code, not much to change here. And I'm going to copy and paste it from a text file. Instead of creating just an instance of employee, I'm going to create an, an array list of multiple employees and populate them. So I have uh, one, two, three employee objects that I'm going to add to an array list. And notice um, array list cannot be resolved because I pasted this in and I don't have the proper import statement. So one quick control shift O and it should resolve my imports and add an import statement in my code. And uh, some recommendations and warnings about Java features for generics and that um, array lists now should be parameterized, but we're fine with that. Little copy and paste gone awry um, because I need to change or I want to change the uh, object that I'm setting as the attribute with a key name employee instead of emp, which I had before. I'm actually going to set the whole map so that I can use my tags to retrieve this array list and loop through it, uh, iterate through the array list, and, and use some of the standard tags to do that. Um, I think I'll create a different uh, JSP to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and rename um, the or uh, change the string and create another 
JSP to demonstrate specifically JSTL, but I need to make sure they match those file names when I create the JSP. So the server code should be good to go. Nothing um, very Java special about this. The only thing we really changed in this um, do get method is that instead of adding one employee bean instance, we're going to add an array list of employee bean instances. And we're still going to set the attribute. We're going to use the set attribute method on the request object and set to the key value employee. So I'll go ahead and I'll save that. So we saw renaming using a tool to refactor the Java code. In other words, rename it and update all the references um, for the Java code itself, including updating the reference in the web XML of the application deployment descriptor. Now what I'd like to do is take this uh, JSP that I was working with for the expression language and copy it, create a copy of it with a new file name and work from there to add some JSTL tags in addition to the expression language. So a very simple copy, a very simple paste. It asked me to rename the file. No, it didn't because I pasted it in the wrong place. See, my bad. But watch, I can use the tool to drag it to the correct location. I pasted it into web INF. I meant to paste it into web content. So I can click and drag to move it. And now it says the file is going to be replaced. I can cancel out of there. I can rename this um, before I move it. Uh, the move effort just clicking and dragging, it's not going to prompt me to rename the file. If I use move from the menu, it will. But I'll give it a new name while I'm here before I move it, and I can move it to the right location. If I hide JSPs below web INF, I have to use different references, different URI references to get to it. So now, because it doesn't exist, I can just pick it up and move it, and it should move it to the right place, and it did. Uh, my bad, but it happens um, where, you know, you accidentally paste it to the wrong place. you got to watch out for that kind of stuff. So let's open up uh, this JSP. We've got some very basic code here. But what I want to be able to use is um, some of the Java standard tag libraries to read from the request object just as we did with the expression language. I'm going to read an array list this time, and I'm going to use some of the Java standard tag tags from the JSTL. I'm going to use those to write out my code. Okay, So I'm going to add to the top of my JSP, in addition to uh, using the standard page directive, I'm going to add a tag directive for tag library. I can uh, use the outline and try and add an attribute, add before, add after, um, or I can just begin typing and the code will, uh, the, the tool will help fill in the code for me. So the syntax for the tag lib directive is percent and the at sign. And as soon as you uh, correctly type taglib as your directive, the color will change on the uh, code in the tooling to indicate that, yes, I know this is a keyword, but you're still missing some required attributes here. OK, so um, in this first example, we're only going to try and make use of the uh, core tag library the core runtime tag library. That's the one I want to uh, check out. So the URI is currently http colon slash slash java dot sun dot com slash jstl slash uh, core underscore rt, just like we saw in the example. And I'll stick with tradition because that's you know just how I am. I'm so traditional and specify the prefix attribute. And the value of the prefix attribute becomes how I'm going to reference tags. It becomes the prefix for how I'm going to reference tags that are um, described in the tag library uh, for core runtime. And traditionally, the prefix, and this is how you'll see it in most of the documentation for this particular tag library, we see C underscore RT as the prefix. 
Okay, so we've got to change our title so we know which JSP we're rendering for which one. So we're still accessing a request attribute in our JSP, but this time instead of using the expression language or in addition to using the expression language, we're going to use some tags from the standard tag library. Because what we're displaying, because what we're rendering is no longer a simple object or a one instance object, it's actually an array. We need to fix our syntax a little bit here. If I just want to get the first employee in my list, I can reference that list using the standard Java list syntax. Okay, nothing's changed there, but let's do the same thing um, using from the core tag library. We're going to use the uh, oops, core out tag, okay? And um, once I begin typing, once I've declared in uh, the taglib directive, as I begin typing my tag, notice it says, oh, I discovered all these new tags, okay? So you can use content assist here. And if I scroll down, I see, yes, out is available. And it's asking for the value. And it does an open close tag for you if necessary, if you need to see that. If all you're doing is outputting a value, um, this is also acceptable as a self-closing tag. So even though the tool helped me, I'm going to uh, try and use just a simple self-closing tag. Okay, within the value attribute, I want to specify the same thing that I'm seeing above using the expression language, but now we're going to use the out tag so that we can see in the output, we can see the difference, essentially no difference in the output, only we're using JSP tags instead of embedding the expression language code, which is not really clearly documented. Once I begin to use the out tag, the uh, in reading this simple code, I can see that yes, this is JSP tag. But if I look at the line above at first pass without the wealth of information that I already have, at first pass the line above employee ID with the expression language syntax embedded in there is not really clearly defined unless you're used to reading scriptlet tags and expression tags and the expression language tags embedded right in. Uh, my JSP. I also didn't get the content assist as I was typing. So what we're moving toward is a goal of purifying our JSP code so that it becomes more uh, easy to read, easy to maintain, easy, as, easy for us to establish a vocabulary with our team members. So for the value attribute, I'm going to use the same expression, um, but this time I'll, I'll do uh, first name. So I will copy, I will paste, but instead of employee um, number, which we saw in the previous line, we'll ask for the first name attribute, the value of the first name attribute from, again, the first position in the employee list, which would be an employee object. So this is actually going to call the get first name, the get employee number on the list, only in the first position for a zero indexed list. Okay, so we should be able to run this. Give ourselves a little sanity check. What we're trying to see is um, make sure that uh, the tag libraries are available as we expect them to be and that we have the proper usage of a very basic standard tag. So I run uh, my servlet and uh, republishing is required because I've changed the code and the server is starting up. And what we should see is um, we should see JBoss open a browser window and show us two lines. Show us the employee number using the expression language and uh, another line, although I'm not sure I put the HTML in there, another line showing us the employee's first name. Oh, I did. Um, so the employee ID is in using the expression language and using the core out tag, I get the employee's first name. So let's get a little fancier here. Let's go back to our demo JSP and uh, get a little fancier. Instead of just getting the first value, 
Okay. We will iterate the list using our newly discovered uh, from the core runtime library the for each tag to iterate the list. So we'll leave our labels up there because I like seeing my name on the screen. And then um, we'll add another label. Did I put a paragraph tag in? Uh, let's maximize this so we can see it on the screen. Let's make sure that we have a new line tag in our HTML. And then from our tag library, again from the core tag library, we're going to use and begin typing and it helps with the content assist. And this time I actually do want an open close block because in the for each tag and the use of the for each tag, we're going to iterate a list. Now it's already telling me that I'm missing certain uh, attributes. So what I want to do is begin specifying those attributes in the qualifications of the opening of the for each tag. So I'm going to specify the, a local variable. In this case, um, we'll call it imp uh, for employee. And the item, the list that I want to iterate in my for each is in fact what? Using the expression language, dollar sign, open close bracket, and notice the tool put a bracket in even though I typed it. And what I'm looking for is employee, sorry, as a list. Okay. Now all I'm going to do inside of that loop is um, grab some information from the employee bean instance at each position in the loop at each iteration. So the name will be, and I'll use the expression language. Imp dot first name, and then I'll put some space in. We'll grab the last name field. Oh, we didn't put anything in the last name field. Did we put anything in the last name field? Uh, let's look in our servlet code. Did we put anything in the last name? No, we put employee number. So let's do. Um, so let's grab uh, employee number instead of last name. Using the expression syntax, using the curly bracket, amp dot employee number, and then put a line break, an HTML line break after each name and employee number. Okay. Remember that I get the same encountered uh, end of file. Um, usually when I, the, the, when those error messages won't go away, um, the first thing I try, because I'm always trying the fastest solution in the Eclipse tooling for some reason, especially with the JSP developer, is closing the designer, the page designer and opening it again and notice the end of file error has gone away. You know, it happens. Um, if I want to in the JSP designer, I can choose a uh, source and here it's not format, it's cleanup document. In the Java editor, it's format. Um, but you can format, you can clean up document. It'll, uh, the tool will go according to your instructions and the selections you make here. Uh, the tool will go through your code and, and, and organize it and indent it and um, insert missing tags, um, quote various attribute values, quick fix. I didn't have much um, for it to fix. But I normally I'd like to see things like uh, this for each loop indented, but it's not necessary. Okay, so I will save here. Everything looks good. And now let's run it. We shouldn't have to wait for the server to restart, but we will have to wait for the application to rebuild. And uh, let's run our servlet this time with a multi-valued list and iterating through the list. So the only thing we've really changed in the JSP is to demonstrate using the for each tag um, in our JSP from the core tag library. So run as, run on server. We see the build, the build and the publish needs to happen again, but the server's already started up. So Eclipse should show us a browser window and we didn't get our list. How come? Let's try hitting, um, oh, I know. Does anybody know? Anybody see it in the uh, URL? Uh, because the application server hadn't started, it had already loaded the web context uh, deployment descriptor. And when we um, 
fixed that in the deployment descriptor. It's uh, calling an old JSP, or we didn't change. So let's let's do some troubleshooting. Um, nope, it's calling the right JSP, but the URL is not coming up correctly. So it's probably a mismatch with what's loaded in the server. Um, let's look at a quick way to fix that. If I do run as run on server, again, I don't have to wait for the build, but notice the URL didn't quite come out right. It's probably because the URL namespace was already loaded. In other words, the server was running. When I refactored the servlet code, it didn't change the instance that was actually running. It only changed the compiled version. So the tool did a lot of work for us, but it didn't do everything. So if I modify the URL here, to the actual URL name of my new servlet, I should be able to run it uh, this way, essentially calling out, and it says it is not available. So let's try stopping the server, unfortunately. and running it with a fresh server. So that's one of the things that Refactor doesn't do for you. In most environments, most projects that I've worked on, uh, you don't refactor code on a running server anyway um, without unloading the old value. So if this doesn't work, then I've done something else wrong, and we need to um, check where we're going. Still looking for demo EL. Uh, let's look at our deployment descriptor. And sure enough, it changed the servlet class, but not the URL name. So why is it not loading our JSP? So the URL name is fine. It didn't change the URL pattern when we refactored. Um, it's pointing to the right Java server class, but why are we getting an old version of our JSP that was loaded into memory? Let's Oh, see, all I had to do was refresh the URL. So my first instinct was totally incorrect. I should have done uh, more work to investigate the results of refactoring my Java code. It changed the Java class reference, but it didn't change the URL reference in the WebXML, which it shouldn't. That's fine. Um, and then I tried running it, and the cached running instance of my JSP took a while to come up, even if I, after I restarted the server. So quite possibly what happened here, generally, it's not unusual, um, is that the browser inside of Eclipse was caching the results from that JSP. And so just hitting refresh or con continually refreshing on the browser side forced it to re-execute. So we see the output, which we were initially expecting after a couple of tries. Um, we see the output of using the static um, expression language, we see output of using the simple out tag, and we see the output iteration name and the first name and the employee number of our three employees, all three of which were loaded in our servlet in a rather simple way. So that should give us a feel for how to use in our JSPs, how to use some of the standard tags that are available in most JSP 2.0 spec application servers.